This is the last question we're going to have a look at from this particular practice exam. It's a pretty straightforward integral, but you have to choose the substitution and it's not told to you what substitution to use. And that is actually one of the reasons why I want to show you this question and work through it because um, there's a couple of different good candidates for a substitution. Let's have a look. Evaluate the integral from 1 to 2 of, um, it's 1 over, like there's a 1 just kind of hiding here, right? 1 over this x, 1 plus log x or squared function with respect to x. Okay, so let's just grab a hold of this and copy that and let's pop it into where we're writing our solutions. This will do. Okay, fantastic. What did we say? I think this was part f. Now, as I just mentioned, um, the tricky but also cool thing about this is that you're not told what uh, substitution is appropriate. Uh, in fact, you're not told to use substitution at all. But when you have a look at this, uh, hopefully you sort of recognize that this is not one of the standard forms um, for something to integrate. So you're going to have to do something to sort of manipulate it to make it easier to work with. Okay. And the first instinct is to say, well, there's log x terms in there. Gross. <laughs> Usually log x terms are things we try to avoid integrating. Differentiation is fine, but to integrate them, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to have to do integration by parts here, okay? But you've got a function of a function, and that's sort of what clues you in, that just trying to go straight at this with integration by parts is not going to be very useful, okay? So what I'm going to do is suggest that that, um, that term right there, 1 plus log x um, that's being squared, the function of a function there is going to be useful to choose as our substitution. So let's go ahead and work out what happens with the substitution and then we'll just sub all of our bits in. Uh, you know, the boundaries, our integrand here, and then also change the variable of integration. So here we go. If we just take this and we define that, we'll say let u equal 1 plus log x. Uh, let's see what we get out of this. Um, for starters, it's fairly easy to change the variable of integration because when you differentiate u with respect to x, don't need to worry about the constant of 1, it just differentiates away, and then log x becomes 1 over x. Now, when you have a think about this, if you have a look at the top back at our original question, 1 over x is right there. So that's a really promising sign, so thumbs up. Okay, uh, I'm also going to need to change my boundaries, right? They used to be x equals 1 and x equals 2. So I'm going to say when x equals 1, what do I get out of that? Uh, I'm going to say that u is 1 plus log of 1. Log of 1 is just 0, so I get this result. That's kind of cute. x equals 1 leads to u equals 1. Um, and then when I do x equals 2, my upper boundary, what do I get? Same substitution, 1 plus log 2. But then you say, oh, that's it. Like, there's not really much other way to simplify it, so I'm just going to leave it. It looks slightly messy, but that's fine. I can um, substitute that in, and it should come out in my um, definite integral. Okay, so therefore I can say the integral of, and you've seen me do this before and I like making it very explicit, when I'm changing my boundaries I'm just going to state what the boundaries used to be, they were x boundaries. I've got the dx on the top and then on the denominator I've got x 1 plus log x all squared. Okay, what's that going to be equal to? Well. Here come the boundaries, so um, my x equals 1 became u equals 1, and my x equals 2 became u equals 1 plus log 2. And then uh, we just try to sort of chew through this bit by bit, right? You can see that this 1 over x hanging out the front, it's just going to be um, the you know, the 1 over x and the dx together just become du, right? So in fact, I'm not going to write this at all, that du is going to hang out on the end. All you get left with is um, this 1 plus log x or squared on the denominator. And I already know what the 1 plus log x piece is, right? It's just going to be um, 1 over u squared. Uh, and then this 1 over x dx becomes the du that I saw before. Okay, so I'll just highlight that. You can see those two things go together. Okay, so this is great. Like I've made this about as easy to integrate um, as you can see. Um, you know, this is u to the power of negative 2. Maybe you want to write that line separately, but I think we know what to do with this, right? I'm going to raise the power by 1, and then I'm going to divide by the new power. So that's going to be, uh, here comes my square brackets, uh, rather negative u to the power of minus 1 negative 1. You see what I've done there? The negative 2 went up in negative 1 and I divided by the negative 1. And of course I've got my boundaries 1 and 1 plus log 2. Okay, uh, what can I do with this? Well, um, let's just do our substitution, right? So this is actually, uh, I guess you could if you want to just have one less thing in your brain, you can have that minus sign out the front and then this is just 1 over u, right? 1, 1 plus log 2. 
So uh, here comes the upper boundary. It's going to be minus one over one plus log two. And then that lower boundary is going to be, just be careful, it's a double negative happening here because that negative at the front is going to be blood plus one over one. That's it, okay? So when I look at this, I'm like, oh, okay, common denominator. Uh, I notice that this one over one, um, I can write as one plus log two over one plus log two because I'm multiplying through by that, so it's a bit sneaky, I know. Um, but once you can see that, you've got one plus log two take away one. Uh, I'm getting that minus one from here. And that's all over that common denominator that I just got one plus log two. So ones cancel log two over one plus log two, there's my result, okay? Now, like I said, this is a pretty neat way to do it, uh, but one of the things I like to do is to try and highlight for you that, well, if, you're, if you get to choose what your um, substitution is, what happens if you choose something else? One plus log x is not the only choice that is valid, um, and being that you are dealing with logarithms, you may recall that the flip side of a logarithm is an exponential, and in fact, if you use an exponential um, substitution, uh, it ends up being just as straightforward. So what I'm gonna do is, just to keep things separate, um, let's choose something like t, right? That's another um, variable that we tend to, oh, another pronumeral that we tend to use to substitute in as our dummy variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, let's just call this method two. Uh, instead of saying uh, that uh, u equals one plus log x, what I'm going to say is, well, let's just frame this in terms of exponential. So I'm going to say, let say x equal e to the t, and that implies that the log function is going to be log x equals t. So you can see this is very, very similar. Um, I'm, I'm sort of getting this, um, it's still log x appearing, it's just not one plus log x. And what's gonna happen is everything's gonna be in terms of exponential, so it's gonna be very, very straightforward to evaluate. Okay, let's have a go. Um, in exactly the same way, uh, I'm going to, number one, differentiate to change the variable of integration, and then I'm also gonna get my new boundary. So I'm gonna go dx on dt in this case. Um, this is one of those nice things about an exponential, it's just gonna be e to the t. And then I look at my boundary, so what was it? Um, I said x equals one was the first boundary, so I'm gonna get uh, one equals e to the t, so it, clearly t is gonna be zero for this. And then for x equals two, I get um, two equals e to the t, so t is just going to be equal to log two, taking logs of both sides. Okay, uh, I'm ready to go, I've got all my pieces, so I can say therefore the integral from, uh, let's do it again, x equals one, x equals two of one over x one plus log x squared, oh, oh yeah, I'll leave that dx over there since I've already written it. What's that going to be equal to? Well, let's uh, pop in our new boundaries first, so I'm going from zero to log two, um, or I should say, that's a bit sneaky, wasn't it? I should say I'm actually going t equals log two and t equals zero. All right, and now I just go bit by bit through the integrand and, uh, and also the uh, variable of integration. So what am I going to get? Um, you can see up the top there, right? Um, that dx is going to become e to the t dt, right? Can you see them combining together? So I'm gonna get e to the t dt on the top. On the denominator, um, I used to have an x, but I'm substituting that for e to the t, so you can see some cancelling's gonna go on there. Um, and then my one plus log x all squared, well, I know that log x is just gonna be t, right? So therefore, this just becomes one plus t all squared. That's it. So you can see um, that's gonna cancel, that's gonna cancel, so you're gonna get from naught to log two of um, one plus t to the power of negative two. DT, and hopefully this looks familiar. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. It's sort of reverse chain rule, but it's a very simple reverse chain rule because your inside derivative is one. You're going to get uh, negative one plus t to the negative one, and I'm gonna pop in zero and log two, okay? So from here, uh, let's have a go. Uh, pop that minus sign out the front, and then what you get is, uh, I'm gonna do my upper boundary first, so it's one over one plus log two, does that look familiar? Uh, and then I'm subtracting uh, one over one plus zero, which is one. And at this point, I'm kind of gonna stop because you're sort of like, oh, this is deja vu, right? At this point here, this line of working is going to very shortly become this line of working up here. So we know where it goes, and of course we end up with the same result. 
Which one is better? Um, I think they're both pretty equivalent. Uh, it kind of, if your brain went to one or the other immediately, I'd be not fussed either way. Um, but my point here is you can choose, there's not like one right substitution that gives you the best answer. They will all give you the same answer if you do them correctly. Uh, and sometimes they're pretty equivalent, right? Exponentials and logs, um, two sides of the same coin.